I'm going to give you an, another journey, and this is opnic neuritis. And so again, just like I showed you this schema um, earlier for skin health, the same thing, environmental pollution, some of these kind of um, you know, preservatives and, and, and some of these chemicals in our food and even stress can have a major impact. It causes chronic inflammation. In the case of eye health, this is actually dealing with patients who have multiple sclerosis. This is an autoimmune disease. And it's funny because when I got trained in what I call Western medicine, we learned all about symptoms and how to treat them with drugs. But what I've done now in the 30 years since is I've actually looked at the root causes. And these are the root causes. Even stress can cause autoimmunity. And what happens in the case of multiple sclerosis is our immune cells are overreactive, overactivated, and they'll actually go, I don't know if most of you remember from high school biology, if not, no worries. There's a long channel or long chain here where the signals start in the in this top of the neurons and they go all the way down sometimes to our extremities. And these are actually insulated by Schwann cells. And what we know is when immune cells called microglia in the brain and the spinal cord are overactivated because of these environmental stimulants, they actually start attacking the Schwann cells. So they attack the insulation and our signals can kind of, kind of get awry. And what happens, the scariest part of multiple sclerosis is people can wake up blind because of the optic nerve having the Schwann cells actually be destroyed. This is actually a true MRI, slice transverse section of the brain. These white lesions are active lesions of, of multiple sclerosis, and that would be here where the Schwann cells are being degraded and these neurons are actually being destroyed. So it's a, a really major issue. And so again, if you go into PubMed, you can see there's many publications looking at the connection now between the very root causes What's really driving multiple sclerosis? And for a scientist, you know, a physician scientist like me, this is one of the most amazing schematics. Um, the sad thing is, is this is decades worth of work and lots of labs around the world. And what we see is we can breathe in airborne pollution. It goes into our lungs where it upregulates macrophages and T cells of our immune system, gets into our lymph nodes where it's further activating these immune cells, crosses a blood brain barrier, upregulates these microglia immune cells in our brain and then causing destruction of our nerves. This is a beautiful image that literally shows the root causes of multiple sclerosis. The amazing thing is, is our product through mechanism of action, we can actually get to the root causes. So this is a, one of the reasons we're doing this study. And then this is a little personal as well. This is my community. If you're out in Maryland, I live in Western Maryland. It's very beautiful, lots of agriculture. The problem is, is on, around the corner from me, within five houses, there's two people that have been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in the recent years. And what's amazing is when we think about where we live, we're on old farmland. And so for decades, if not over a hundred years, these fields have been sprayed and treated with pesticides and herbicides. And some of these are called POPs, persistent organic pollutants. And it takes years and sometimes they never go away and they can get into our groundwater, they can get into the soil, they're in the air. And when they are made contact with us, they can have major problems. And again, we have, because, and you'll see this a lot too, where people in rural areas and agricultural lands have increased risk of cancer, you know, MS, autoimmune disease, and lots of other chronic conditions because of these chemicals that are ever present in our environment. Here's another region I'm gonna tell you the story about a friend of mine who lives down in Colombia, South America. This is a country where agriculture is a very big part of their daily life. All throughout the day and night, there's planes that come and spray all the fields. And if you're nearby, unfortunately, you're kind of one of these unintended person who gets some of these chemicals onto them or, or close by and ends up in their drinking water. And so this is this is a friend of mine. She's 28 years old. She was recently diagnosed three months ago with multiple sclerosis. This is after having several bouts of optic neuritis. It's, an, it's incredibly scary and touching. She would wake up blind in one or both eyes. And she would go to the hospital where it would give her high doses of glucocorticosteroids and then transfer over to steroid pills. This is suppressing the immune system. But now she's actually on one of these new biologic therapies that are standard of care now for multiple sclerosis. And what they do is they suppress the immune system as well. So when a multiple sclerosis patient gets one of these flares, they then get something that suppresses their immune system even further. And that can be quite dangerous when you think about COVID and all these infectious diseases that are out there. So one of my, you know, um, one, of the, one of the days, you know, I found out about what she was going through and she was very interested in Navinia. And when I, you know, I joined this company, I said, you, why don't you give it a try? You know, it might help with some of the chronic inflammation. And I said, just go really low and, and see what happens. You know, give me a call, keep up every day. And so she did this, you know, just um, again, kind of like a proof of concept field study. She started taking it two months ago. She used to have an entire light show at night, like flashes all the time. It would keep her up. It was really tough to go to sleep. They're 99% gone now. No more optic neuritis flares. She's had other types of flares, some issues with her legs and her extremities, but no more of those. She had three bouts of that optic neuritis. That hasn't happened anymore. And I told you, stress can be a major driver of autoimmune disease and multiple sclerosis. She's been under tremendous amounts of stress in the company she's currently working for. There's been dozens of layoffs. So stress hasn't gotten any better. It's gotten worse. And again, this is protecting her from these optic neuritis flares. And because of this and the mechanisms of actions, 
One of my colleagues from the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and Hospital, Dr. Daniel Becker, a neurologist and also a director here of the International Neurological Institute in Towson, Maryland. He and I have been working together on a protocol and I'm happy to say we're very much along. We have just a few more chapters to get done and then we're gonna actually get this reviewed and hopefully launch. And this is gonna be our first study looking at eye health and structure function manifestations using participants that have multiple sclerosis. We're using amazing technology. You know, BioHarvest is at the forefront of, of, of like the, of the, the most, the newest technology. We're using one of these new technologies that are right now starting to show up all around the world. It's called optical coherence tomography, non-invasive. A participant looks into this machine and it actually looks at all the different layers of cells. We can look at immune infiltrates. We can look at pus and serous fluid. This is actually the images that you get. This would be where the optic nerves comes through, some of the arteries. And then it quantitates based on a normalized database of tens of millions of people all over the world. It looks at 16 different sectors. And if there's any red sectors, that means there's damage from optic neuritis or in the eye. And we're gonna start off with the baseline assessment. And then we're gonna give Vinya for six to nine months and see if we can actually turn those reds into greens and stave off optic neuritis and look at some of the structure function. We're gonna be looking at increasing some of these biomarks of inflammation and detoxification in these actual participants. Again, I told you that the cost of these biologics, just like skin, can be quite impressive, sixty dollars to $85,000 per year. And again, you have to worry about immunosuppression and things like COVID and other infectious diseases. And so beyond, you know, this is important that Elon walked us through this clinical trials program that we're doing. So when we're done this pilot study looking at structure function impacts for people with optic neuritis, we're going to have a kind of a, a detour here. We're actually going to go and develop and, and reach out for funding with a colleague of mine and do something on the nutraceutical side as well. So one of our colleagues has actually ran the two of the largest NIH studies for eye health and nutraceuticals, ARIDS 1 and 2, and we're going to bring them back and we're going to develop a study and, and reach out for funding, hopefully from the National Institute of Health to look at eye health you know, promotion. And this would be a nutraceutical. And then we'll still take the other MS and, and optic neuritis and hopefully work and team up with pharma as Elon had described um, a couple slides prior. So again, this is where we can actually do two different products. So nutraceutical on the left side, and then on the right-hand side of our strategy piece, we're gonna actually look at a, at a, a you know, drug or API.